A student uses the apparatus in figure three to determine the specific heat capacity of water. So let's just have a look at this equipment. We've got a power supply, um, we've got an immersion heater, so that will heat up the water. We've got a thermometer and obviously a polystyrene insulation insulatory cup. Um, now, with specific heat capacity, we're looking at the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of a certain amount of water or one kilogram of water by one degree celsius now the first so the first question is state the measurements needed to calculate specific heat capacity of water so obviously if you look at the th formula that's the best thing to look at here it's change of thermal energy requires mass specific uh, not specific heat capacity change in temperature and change in thermal energy that's the one we're trying to work out so we'd have to rearrange it to work it out so mass is important we need the mass of water so that's quite easy you just weigh the water uh, change in temperature so you have to measure the starting temperature and the final temperature and change in thermal energy so energy you could use something like a joule joule meter or something which measures energy so let's have a look temperature before heating water temperature after heating water the mass of the water and energy supplied from the heater so these are the things you need to basically relate to the equation energy supplied by the heater temperature change and mass down here so this again so it seems complicated, but if you just use logic and you use the equation, you can actually answer it quite easily. It needs to get a few of the marks. It's for four marks, so you should be able to get at least three out of the four quite easily. Um, state two ways the, that the apparatus could be adapted to improve the procedure. So these kind of improvement uh, questions are becoming really, really popular in the new spec. So I expect a lot more of these. Um, I think they always give you these kind of simplistic setups and you have to with deliberate loopholes or flaws which you have to spot. So the first thing here is you've got polystyrene cup here, but no lid. So some of that energy is being transferred to the environment and not to the water and therefore not to the thermometer for an accurate reading. So you could put a lid there. The second thing is you could obviously put more insulation for the same reason. You could fully submerge the heater um, because some of that heat isn't being transferred to the water, it's escaping to the environment. Or you could use a thermometer, it's always very accurate, it's hard to read, you can make mistakes. You can use a digital thermometer over here or a temperature probe with a data logger. So add, li uh, add a lid or more insulation, fully submerged heater, digital thermometer and data logger would do. The student decides to measure the temperature of the water every minute while it's being heated. Figure 4 shows the graph of the student's results. So let's just move down here, let me move that up. So it says predict the temperature of water if the heating continues up to 8 minutes. Now this is a bit of a, <laughs> a trick question, but I'll show you how normally you do something like this. So you've got plots here showing a very clear um, positive trend. So you just get a line of best fit. So I've done one already. Here's one I made earlier. Put this here. And you basically um, read off that and, and extend it to the 8 value and then extrapolate from the graph. So you'd see it's around 106 over there. If I did it a little bit more accurately, a bit higher, it'd be about 106. Um, however, before you write 106 there, you have to bear in mind you're dealing with water. And once water reaches 100 degrees Celsius, assuming stuff isn't dissolved in it, assuming pressure's normal, it doesn't uh, increase beyond 100 degrees. So it caps at 100 degrees. So the temperature of water will not be 106. It'll have to be 100 degrees Celsius. Bit of a trick question. A student decides to melt some ice. The student melts 380 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius. Um, the specific latent heat of fusion of ice is 3.34 times 10 to the 5 uh, joules per kilogram. That's how much energy is required to change the state of a substance from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid. So calculate the thermal energy needed to melt the ice. Select an equation from the list of equations at the end of this paper. So whenever you have to, whenever you have to select an equation, just look at what you have. You have a temperature, you have mass in grams, and you have specific latent heat of fusion. You're trying to work out thermal energy. So what's the most fitting um, equation? Well, here it says thermal energy for change of state equals mass, which we've got, and specific latent heat of fusion, which we've got, and we're trying to work out thermal energy. So that's the equation. So let's try and work this out. So we just do, um, 
0.38 kilograms. That is important, actually, that you, you must be aware that mass is almost always, I can't think of any exceptions, in kilograms. So you must convert grams to kilograms. And if you don't know how to do that, well, just remember that. And this is a nice way to remember unit conversions. Just remember that one kilogram equals 1000 grams it could be anything if it, this could work for decimeter cube to centimeter cube but this is kilograms we're dealing with so what do you have to do to convert these things well one kilogram to grams would be timesing by a thousand and 1000 grams to kilograms is dividing by a thousand so you just divide grams by a thousand to get kilograms to convert to convert into kilograms so 0.38 kilograms times 3.34 times 10 to the 5 um, which is basically if you're not sure how to express that um, if you didn't know how to write that in a calculator you'd basically do this so 3.34 34 times 10 to the 5 is basically this decimal point moving forward five spaces one two three four five so you go three three four oh 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 so that's what you're doing here so the point moves five positions one two three four five positions um and that will give you 126,920 joules and that's how much energy there is so you get two marks here for one, it I mean it would be very easy on a higher paper because you're just plugging in equations, but you have to do a couple of steps. You have to do a unit conversion, and you'd need to, assuming you didn't have a scientific calculator, you need to convert that into a figure, a standard form into a normal figure.